Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to welcome everyone to the this seminar today. This seminar was commissioned by English Heritage and it's being hosted by the CEA on behalf of FISH and uh, NN, and also the IFA's Information and Management Special Interest Group. And I'm delighted, as Sarah says, that um, colleagues are able to participate here in New York, but we're also able to have that participation through the virtual seminar that's working alongside this event. I think that's absolutely fantastic. It's really exciting. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works during the day. Um, the aim of TACOS is to really help us on our way to achieving a collaborative strategy for historic environment information. And it builds on the previous successful seminars that have been organised by Airnet, but also on the Nacho seminar that was organised by Phil Carlyle in November 2012. And all of these events have demonstrated the value of bringing together colleagues from across the historic environment, really to share information discuss ideas and also to identify areas for collaboration and this is what we really want to achieve today. We know already that a great deal of excellent work has been achieved and this is through various projects and initiatives right across the sector. But we also know that we've also got a huge amount of knowledge, experience and expertise in, in a whole range of areas and I've just listed a few here, there are many more. Um, setting data standards and creating practical guidance developing innovative, powerful and powerful tools and systems, creating and managing a wide range of data sets and information, providing access to information and data in very exciting and creative ways, and understanding the needs of our various audiences. We've done a huge amount of work in all of these areas and achieved a great deal. Yet having done that, we know that there are things we can do better and that there are gaps that need to be addressed. Fish and Airnet meetings, certainly the ones that I've attended, have highlighted the need for things like new terminology resources, and that's all about supporting better indexing and retrieval information. We need new and improved tools for accessing and sharing information and data, and we've been doing a lot of work on that, but we know there's more that we need to do. We also know that there's duplication of effort, and we want to move away from that. We also um, know there are more efficient ways of capturing and managing information. I'm pretty certain that the solutions to a lot of these issues already exist and that we can uh, achieve the improvement that we're seeking and address the gaps. But um, what we really need to do is to find out where we can pull these together and make them more effectively. As a sector, we're innovative and creative, we're constantly exploring new ways of doing things, and we're also pushing the boundaries. As Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop said in her opening address at the IRA conference in Glasgow, the thirst for knowledge about our past and finding ways of sharing it is really driving innovation. And I think we all um, identify with that. One of the questions, though, as I've said, that we need to consider today is whether there's more that we can do to ensure that the benefits we're getting from particular projects and initiatives are really being realised that we are deriving maximum value from them and that we're also learning lessons. <coughs> I think we also need to do more to ask ourselves whether we can join up projects and initiatives. Can we work together to find ways of addressing the, the barriers that I've spoken about that are preventing us from making the progress that we want to achieve? Is there more to identify those gaps and address those? whether also there are those that we can work with outside the sector to actually help us reach our goals. Although TAPOS, as I've said, has its roots in previous events, this seminar was initiated by Ed and Lee on behalf of FISH and Airnet, and I'd like to thank Ed in particular for securing the funding for us from English Heritage, and Ed also um, secured funding from IFA to support five in-sync attendance bursaries. It has been developed and shaped by the CBA, and I'm particularly grateful to Sarah Howard and also to Dan Miles for all the work that they've put into organising this event and to all their colleagues as well who helped to do that. I'm also grateful to all those who are giving keynote presentations today and our introducers and also our facilitators, and particularly for the virtual seminar as well. We've 
see from the programme that we've divided the day into three sessions. We've got users and new users of data. We've got uh, a session on skills development and a session on information systems and technology. Each of these sessions will be introduced by a colleague and then will be followed by three keynote presentations. And the aim of the um, introductions and also the presentations is really to stimulate debate and challenge assumptions. And they'll be followed by breakout sessions, which will begin the process of identifying the objectives that we hope to take forward. And then following session three, Mike Hayworth from the CBA will be drawing together conclusions and outlining the way forward and developing the strategy. Those of you who know me know that I'm absolutely passionate about collaboration and working together. I strongly believe that by working together, we can bring about change and overcome obstacles, and I think we've proved that in the past. The benefits of this approach were reinforced for me at our last AirNet meeting, which was very kindly hosted by colleagues from the Royal Commission in Edinburgh in November. And one of the presentations was on SHED, and you'll see that cards were being distributed which set out what SHED is all about. It's Scotland's historic environment data strategy, which was launched at the IFA conference in Glasgow. And it's a joint venture between local and national bodies. And it aims to create a collaborative national public information resource for the historic environment. And it really struck me from um, the uh, presentation at Fairnet that this partnership approach to development of the strategy is a really inspiring example of successful collaborative learning um, working. And I hope that lessons learned from this initiative can inform how we work together to actually take forward the strategy that we want to develop. And this takes me back to the TACO seminar today. And I'd really like to remind everyone that the success of this event really depends on participation, both here in York but also through our virtual seminar. We want to hear about your successes, your frustrations, your plans, your thoughts, your ideas. Chuck everything at us on the papers that we build for today. And I appreciate that at a time of increasing pressure on resources, blue sky thinking can be quite challenging. Um, but I would encourage you not to be constrained by current thinking, by current situations, but to think as creatively as possible about what we might be able to achieve through working together. Finally, I hope that whether you're here in your or whether you're participating in the, in the virtual event, that you will find the day informative, you'll find it stimulating, hopefully you'll find it very productive, but perhaps most of all that you'll enjoy it. So thank you very much. And I'd like to hand over to Martin Newman from EH and IMSI. Martin is going to introduce us to session one on users and users of data. Thanks, Jill. Good morning, everyone. As Jill just said, I'm DSP, representing both English Heritage and the Information Management Special Interest Group with the IFA. If you're not uh, members of that, and you're a member of the IFA, and you're here, well, this is a group for you. Please do join us. Um, I think it's very important that we're kicking off the day with this topic, because I think the discussions we're going to have in this session will underpin a lot of what's going to come uh, later. It's important to understand who is using this material, how and why, and what they need in order to derive information, knowledge and products from our data. It would actually help if I press the right keyboard, wouldn't it? I wonder why nothing happened. <laughs> Some of you might be familiar with the classic knowledge pyramid model. The question here, relating to historic environment data, is around who is using this, how, and how best we can facilitate this flow that moves through the model that you see on the screen. There has been a lot of work carried out previously on audience segmentation for heritage data and so really I don't think we want to revisit that in any great detail. What we need to know is how we can actually facilitate and in order to do that we've got three presentations 
coming up. Firstly, we're going to hear about from Professor Chris Gosling of the England Project on big data. It's a very pertinent topic at the moment, so I'm sure you've all, you're all familiar in many different sectors, not just the historic environment. And then we're going to go on to look at the issue of standards. Obviously, if you're going to be looking at big data and how that both relates with across historic environment based sets, but also pulling in data from other sectors, uh, the environmental sector, socio-economic data, then you actually need those standards in order to make it work together and become interoperable. And then lastly, <laughs> Sorry. We're going to have a case study of linking data sets with archives from Victoria Bryant at uh, Worcestershire. And that's going to be linking historic department data together with archives. So, actually, overall, that's going to give us an awful lot of areas to think about. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to give us an awful lot of issues to think about, just a, a smattering of them there on the screen view, because we're again going to try and distill that down into talking about three specific questions. The first one we want to think about is what really good examples are there of products which have exemplified the things we're going to be hearing about from the speakers. Now that's going to be a topic both for the people in this room and also our virtual attendees. Then, just for the people in the room, there's me two other questions. We've gone to talk about how lessons from these be applied to other projects, and what are the main barriers to accessing and reusing this data. And if you're tweeting from within the room, or if you're taking part virtually, please remember to use the hashtag TAPOS2014. Now, I'm going to chair this session as well as introduce it. So if we move straight on to the first speaker, Professor Chris Lawson, and I'm going to be keeping everybody to the allotted 15 minutes quite strictly because we're already behind time. So I might be waving a sign at you saying, stop now, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you okay. just me? Yeah, sure.